the tone in every way. Oh, uh, I love the feeling. Let's get into today's mug shot. This nice young lady named Emery Summy from Los Angeles left a nice mug for me the other day. Y'all want to see it? Yeah! It's hug in a mug. Yes, it is. And I'm going to... Ain't it lovely? That was so sweet of her. I'm going to take my sip, Emery. I did all that dancing for y'all. You didn't think I needed a drink or something? <laughs> Keep on sending me the mugs, y'all, okay? And you can go to jenniferhudsonshow.com or to our social for details on how to get your mugs and your mug shot on the show. So send them to me and send them cute, okay? <laughs> Does anybody else smell it other than me? Oh, my God, y'all, I have a plate of fresh baked Pillsbury Grand's biscuits sitting in front of me. <laughs> smell delicious. Oh, my God. This smell... Hold on. You know how sometimes you smell something and it just take you back down memory lane? Y'all, yeah. this take me back to church, Sunday school, in the morning. Okay? I, that's what would get me out the bed, to go to Sunday school, because <laughs> before Sunday school, you got that Sunday morning breakfast. Yeah. Okay? My unvada May, honey. She used to cook all the dinners and the breakfast and the lunch at church. And when we would get there, baby, she would have them Pillsbury biscuits just to sit in there, smelling just... <laughs> <laughs> smelling just like this right here. And I would get in there. I couldn't wait to get to church, because, you know, as kids, we didn't want to get up too early on Sundays. But if they reminded me of that, that breakfast that Unvada made on Sundays, and I know my family know what I'm talking about, she'd pull out these good old biscuits just like this, and they'd be fresh out the oven. Yeah, my mouth watering right now. Think about it. <laughs> Yes, it is. And then my grandmama, I swear she kept her Pillsbury biscuit in her purse because... <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Because then you know how you had to have the church dinners at, in between services. So that's like, you know, kind of like lunchtime. And grandma will have her good old fresh Pillsbury biscuit. But then she'll have hers with some fried chicken. Yeah. There it go. And then my, my friend, best friend Walter is a chef, right? So my son is a foodie. Now he can cook himself, but he do the, like the dumplings with the Pillsbury biscuit, with the, the biscuits, and he'll chop them up and make a good old dumpling for them. That's their whole little zhuzh that they like. And then I like to, well, see, ain't too much of a cook, but Pillsbury is easy to cook with. So I get in that kitchen, think I'm doing something. I ain't doing too much, but it make me feel like I... <laughs> I get in there, and then you get some little, some little, look, like the little biscuit, and you, oh, I just like how it open up. It's all mushy. And then I may stuck me, stick me some little deli meat up in there, because I like a little turkey, make it a little spicy with it, and then put some syrup on top of it. Oh, y'all don't want my menu. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, get into it. But everybody is going to love these because each one of these freshly baked Pillsbury Grand Biscuits has a crispy outside and a yummy, fluffy inside. Ooh, this sounds good to me. And since the Jennifer Hudson Show is partnering with Pillsbury all season long, everyone is getting a Pillsbury Grand Biscuit up in here. <laughs> yes, we are. You gonna get fed and have a lot of fun. So let's get started right now. Y'all better get a hold of that biscuit before I do. Yes, you better. Oh my God, I am so excited for y'all to meet my first guest. She's a professional athlete and a former Harlem Globe trotter. And I invited her here to show us some of her skills. Please welcome Krissa Jackson. <laughs> How 
that? That's a little something something. Uh, just a little bit? How did you learn how to do that? Well, you know, I woke up like this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just imagine my mom giving birth like that. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I've been playing basketball since I was younger, literally. Everything basketball. That was so dope. I appreciate that. Oh my God, so you used to do the um, Harlem Gold Trotters? Yep. What was that like? Well, um, first off, it was an unexpected turn. You know, I was the 13th woman to play for them. Oh. I played there almost three years. It was an unexpected wow. turn because it was, first I didn't know the girls played on the Harlem Globetrotters at all. And then I had went to their games when I was younger, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? And then asking for autographs, and next thing you know, I'm on the other side of the ropes giving autographs. Doing it. Exactly, and I never know, like, you know, growing up, you're playing sports, you want to play prof professionally, you know, you want to be famous, all these things, but you mm -hmm. never realize, like, what it could give as far as inspiration to kids. Right. And now I'm able to inspire so many, so many people, adults, kids, boys, girls, they're DMing me saying that I, I was an inspiration for them to even try out. It's, it's honestly, it was what, what set the tone for me, you know, playing for You them. set the tone already yeah. on your phone. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I'm I inspired. So I want to learn something. And, and you did something with Paula Abdul in a video. You know what I'm saying? It was a little Tell something, about something that. again. You know? How did well, that come about? Well, I actually came across her at a, um, a Pride event. She mm -hmm. was walking about to go to her float, and I was like, that's Paula Abdul. I was like, maybe I should go spin the ball on her finger. Did you? I did. And she, she was like, oh my God, you just made my day. And from there, we kind of kept in contact. And I was just like, I would love to make a video with you. You know, like, um, Jennifer, I would love to make a video with you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. But see, but, but before you make a video with me, you got to show me some moves. And I'll, you oh, you, are you ready, though? Look, I got my, y'all believe in me? You think I could do this? <laughs> I got a basketball kid at home, so I think I, I don't know, but I can't do that. You need to show out for him. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. You got to represent for that. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you. But I want to teach you how to spin the ball. But I've been noticing you got them daggers on them fingers. Yeah, you I know can't really play too, many, too much ball. So I did, I, I did bring a pen. OK. If that's cool. OK. So then you can hold the Whatever pen. Whatever I need. All right. So I want to learn. Hold this pen. I hold the pen up like yeah, this? Just like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. OK. All right. Keep it away from your face, you know what I'm saying? OK. Hey, OK. Here we go. And you're going to hold it real strong. Don't let the pen drop. You know what I'm saying? Confidence, baby. Look, David! I did it! She did it! Your mama can do anything! Ah! You know what I'm saying? Oh my god! Yeah! Okay, show yeah. me. What else can I show me something? Okay, you wanna know another trick? Alright, so I came out doing this right here, right? Uh-huh. I wanna try to show you how to do that. Okay, let me see. It's just like this right here. What? And then you just do that right there. You know and then I'm gonna just do that right you there. Do... I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Alright, so what you do? Can she have the best one yet? Go ahead, grab this joint right here. Oh, oh, okay, okay. There you go. You yep. gonna, who gonna, you gonna hook the pin? Okay, yeah. Oh, Bam. bow, bow. Teamwork, see? see? A little bit, Already so a team player, hey. you know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, so you're gonna hold the basketball like this, all right? You're gonna take your right hand. You're right-handed, right? Yes. Okay, you're gonna toss this one up in the left and then shoot it through underneath the basketball. Mm-hmm, yep. You see She's me trying it. to comprehend that? Y'all just thought she did it. <laughs> yep, so you throw it up and push it through. Oh, no! Oh. Yep, yep. That was close? Yep. So once you push it through, you're gonna keep it there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're gonna keep it okay, there. Okay, I think mm -hmm. I understand. Yep. Yep. Oh, there you go. Yep. And now throw it through. Throw it through. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna teach you one more thing. Show, show me another thing. All right. This one here is like a roundabout. So you wrap it around here. So you'll start it up and you'll kind of make it in an angle going down. And then you'll lean back with it, right? Lean back. And then when you lean back, you're gonna let this arm roll down. So it's Rolling down this way, around your chest, back down here. So it'll be something like that. You make it look so easy. <laughs> oh, one more time. One more time. <laughs> Do it for the one time. All right, and down. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Here we go, y'all. Yeah. Oh! Did I do it okay? You did it! Okay. That was pretty good. You want to get it one more one time? More, one more try. Roll it down like, like you got, girl. Bit. Come on here. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. I so got arms up a little bit. Arms more. up there a little go. bit. And you're gonna lean back and then drop that left hand a little Whoa. bit. Oh! That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not, I like that one. How about some dribbling tricks? Okay. I wanna see if you go between the legs. Okay, I think uh -huh. I can do that. Uh huh. Yep. Oh. That's it right there. That's it right there. Let's try the other leg. Your left hand, yeah. Wait, even if I'm right handed? Do yeah, we gotta like, dribble both. Wait, hold oh. on. Uh-huh. Wait, one, oh, more, one, one more time. It's my show. One more time, y'all. <laughs> OK, I did That's it. That's it. That's good. That's it. That's it. All right, so now you're going to go bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Whap it here. Snap it there. Ooh. 
That she was the pass. Okay, now you gonna go. <laughs> Girl, hold on, hold the line. Whoa. Now hold, I don't know about this leg lifting up, hold on. I but you get... got that. Wait, okay, okay. So you want me to go? Well, you... All right, that was gonna be my next one. If you can go between and then cross. You kind of just did okay, it, honestly. Between and across. Yep. Yeah. Listen. What listen, can't you I do? Need, I need a session. I could, I could get, I get better at life. I promise you. Oh, you already okay. good. Isn't she amazing, y'all? Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank we you appreciate it. Now I have skills like my kids. <laughs> He's gonna be proud of his mama. Oh my God. We'll be right back. Our next guest is a former monk and award-winning podcast host and beloved New York Times best-selling author. He's changed the way millions of people live their lives. Here with his newest book, Eight Rules of Love, please welcome Jay Shetty. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I am so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. We're so happy to have you. Can you sense it in the energy? I love it. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you have a very interesting life. You was a monk for three years. Yes. How did you get involved with that? Oh, uh, so I used to go and hear entrepreneurs, athletes, people speak. This mm -hmm. is before podcasts, before YouTube. And I heard a monk speak. And I was 18 years old and I was blown away and I said, I want to learn what he has. I realized that I'd met people who were beautiful, I'd met people who were strong and powerful. But when I was 18, when I met him, I finally found someone who was happy. And I thought to myself, I want what he has. And so I went and followed him and spent time with him. And then he became a teacher of mine. And I ended up spending three years in a monastery. Oh, wow. That is amazing. <laughs> what is the day in the life of a monk like? What? Okay. So you, you, no one has to do this, by the way. So you wake up at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then you meditate for about four to eight hours a day. Uh, all your possessions fit inside a gym locker. Everything you own. You sleep on the floor. You don't have a place that's yours. You just sleep in any space that you can find. Uh, it's, and then you spend the rest of the day doing service. So you go out and feed the homeless, you go and feed children, you're going out and trying to be of service That's to beautiful. society. It's really beautiful, it's really special. That is amazing. Wow, and you're married. How did you meet your wife? <laughs> okay, this is, this is an interesting story. So my wife and I met actually through, this is six months of my last year of college. I was, I knew in my mind I was gonna become a monk. So I'd spend my weekends at my local temple trying to stay out of trouble. And one day this lady came, my mother's age, and I was asked to show her around mm -hmm. and how to do certain services. I'd never met her before. I'd never had to do this again. I showed her around and she said, hey, I have a young daughter who I'd love to introduce to spirituality and meditation. And I said to her, well, I'm gonna be a monk in six months, so I'll introduce her to my sister. I didn't realize at this point I'd met my future wife's so mom. Didn't know. Okay. This was a mom that I'd just met. Wow. And then four years later, when I came back from the monastery, my wife and my sister had become really good friends. And so my sister was our, our wing person. She was the person who, who hooked us up. So Ooh, that's, isn't that that's beautiful? how we met. Yeah. I love that. Talk about your new book, Eight Rules of Love. Why did you want to write it? I just really feel like love is so critical to the quality of our lives. And mm -hmm. I feel like so many of us are single and looking for love. So many people are in relationships and they've lost the spark. So many people have just broken up or had a divorce and they want to refine love within themselves. So I just felt that we've talked a lot about physical health. We've talked a lot about mental health, but I don't think we've talked about relationship health enough. And so I wanted to put a spotlight on that. Mm, okay. And yes. <laughs> How do you define love? So, I feel like love is one of these interesting words to define because everyone has their own definition and I think you should define it. It's not just a feeling or an emotion. My definition is that it's when you know someone's personality. Do you know what they're like when they get tired? Do you know what they're like when they get irritated? Do you know what they're like when they're having a bad day? If you know that, that's one step. The second is, do you respect their values? Mm -hmm. Most of the time in relationships, we want our partner to value what we value. We want them to like what we like. But actually, relationships are about respecting their values. And the third one is, are you committed to help them achieve their goals? Mm. Do you want to see them rise to their potential? Do you want to support them? And do you want to help them become the best version of themselves? Those are the three parts of my definition of love. Y'all got that? <laughs> I was listening very closely. Okay. We, oh, we got some good stuff. So we put a lot of importance on romantic love. Should we do that? So. I think that we've put romantic love on a pedestal, and I think we've forgotten to realize that there's so many other beautiful relationships. 
the relationship you have with your mother, the relationship you have with your children, the relationship you have with your, your brother, your best friend, your sibling, whatever it may be. And I feel like if I ask someone to compare the love they have for their child to the love they have for their partner, you'd say that's ridiculous, it's just different. Mm -hmm. But I know so many people who have beautiful relationship with their kids, but because society makes them feel inadequate because they don't have a partner in their life. And so I actually think we need to celebrate all these other forms of love. And in the tradition that I studied as a monk, it talks about how the closest thing to pure love is a mother's love for their child. Mm. And so I think we need to celebrate that more, uh, put more spotlight on that. Thank you for that. You'll stick around for a little bit? Yes, absolutely. All right, more with Jay. We'll be right back. Okay, on our show, we talk about deal breakers a lot. What do you think, like, about red flags when you meet someone? Oh, uh, there's, there's quite a few red flags. One of the first ones is when someone says, I love you too soon. Mm. So studies show that women say it after about three months, men say it about in a month, like within a month. And so hearing the words, I love you, that early on, it's like this person doesn't even know you let alone right. love you. And so I think that's a red flag. The other two that came out in some of my research was the halo effect. So the halo effect is when you like one thing about someone, mm. but you assume that means they have lots of other good qualities. So if someone went to a good school, you think they must be organized. Right. Or you think, well, if someone has a good job, then they must be a good person, right? So we start giving people these qualities. And the third and final one that's really interesting is called the context effect. What that means is, let's say you just walked out of a romantic comedy at the theaters. Mm. You're more likely to believe, research shows, that someone you bump into is gonna be a likely partner. Or if you bump into someone at a wedding, you think that's the person you're meant to be with because you just were surrounded by love. It even goes to the point of, if you have a warm drink together, like a coffee, you're more likely to have warmer feelings towards the what? person you're sitting with. So you gotta be really careful, have a cold drink, then you know if you real, <laughs> really have feelings with this person. <laughs> that was really good. I was listening very close. Okay, so you're currently on your first world tour. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Thank Love you. rules, tell us about it. So I'm going on a world tour. It's a 90 minute special interactive experience where I'll be coming into the audience. Audience is gonna come on stage, there's games, there's prizes. It's like a full on interactive experience. I can't wait for everyone to come. Nice, that yeah. sounds amazing. <laughs> we wanna take some questions from the audience about love. Hello, what's Hi. your name and where are you from? Um, my name's Alma. I'm from the city of Orange, California. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. What's your question? Um, I just got married two weeks ago, and... Congratulations. <laughs> and my question to you would be, uh, more like pointers for a long... What are some pointers for a long, happy marriage? Absolutely, great question. So the first thing is congratulations. Uh, beautiful news. One of my first pieces of advice would be start setting agreements around things around the home, around your life, how it works. How often are you gonna go out together? Uh, who's going to do the laundry? Who's going to clean up? Who's going to wash the dishes? Uh, making agreements around how often you're going to have dinner together, breakfast together, spend quality time together. I think a lot of relationships have expectations, but they don't have agreements. Expectations are a hope, a wish, a want. Agreements are things that you both committed to, and now you can hold yourself accountable to. So that's where I would start. Nice. Thank you. I need my notepad. <laughs> this is good. Who's next? Hello, what's your name and where are you from? Hi, my name is Tina. I'm from Ontario, California. All right. What's your question? So my question is, how does a, Jay, you're young, but how does a 61-year-old lady who's outgoing, likes to have fun, can't find a guy her age because they're chasing the younger girls, <laughs> maybe thinking about dating a younger guy, Ooh. but her kids might not approve of it? <laughs> Good How can I get through that? Yeah, Jay. Well, first of all, you're not 61, right? Yeah. Uh, Be 62 in August. Wow, that's, wow. Amazing. that's incredible. That's amazing. Right, you don't look 61 at all. So, uh, but the thing I'd say is that, you know, you're in a place in your life where I love how open you are. You have an amazing energy. You have, you have such great way of like projecting yourself, talking, you have, a, you have a great vibe. Go out there and just meet people. Like, just do it. Just go out there and be there. And it's like, if there's people that you want to be with that are younger than you and the kids don't like it, I'm sure you don't approve of everyone they're dating. So, you know, it's like... Tell them, Jay. Yeah. 
You, you do you. <laughs> I like that one. Thank you so much, Shay, for Thank coming you. to see us. Will you come back again? I will. Thank you so much for having Thank me. You. Thank you. Give him a hand. Eight Rules of Love is available everywhere books are sold. For tickets to Jay's world tour, Love Rules, go to jayshettytour.com. We'll be right back. Now we're about to do something I love to do on this show because I can get deep in y'all business without looking nosy, okay? We surveyed the audience, y'all, and the results are in. It is time to play Survey Six. Give me my, uh, 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 uh. Here's the first one. We sent out uh, a survey and asked the audience, how many of you have ever dated someone to cash in on their job benefits? <laughs> y'all heard me. Um, I have to guess. Let me think. Mmm. I, I say 20, maybe 20 of y'all. That's what I'm sticking with. That feels fair. Yep. I'm gonna go with 20. Let's see what we got, Elizabeth, what we got. Drum roll, please. And the number of people who have dated someone to cash in on their job benefits. I was close, 27. Yes, ma'am. Hello. What's your name and where are you from? And you did that job. <laughs> I'm Ellis, and I'm from Florida. And I once dated the sound mixer for the band um, of Don Henley with the Eagles yes. in order to get backstage passes. Uh -huh. But unfortunately, it did not work out because he was not very tall. <laughs> he hit me about right here. <laughs> Did you ever make it backstage at all? No. No? Never. Oh, no. So it was time for him to go, go. I know, yeah, yeah. I don't blame <laughs> you. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Well, we sent out a survey and asked the audience how many of you ever picked a fight to get your partner to break up with you? Hmm, <laughs> child, let me think. I would say 35. Uh, let's see. I saw him think. Look at that face. Okay, I'm sticking with it. Let's see. Let's see what you got, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, and the number of people who have picked a fight with their partner to get them to break up with them is 32. I said 35, 32. Child, what you done did? What's your name? Where you from? I'm Maxwell. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. That's close to my hometown, baby. Neighbors, neighbors. Yes, yes. Tell me all about it. What you do? So um, I picked a fight, but not necessarily to break up with my partner, uh, but uh, to have great makeup sex. <laughs> oh! What's that? Uh, you don't sit down after that. So that was really like your thought process? Like, ooh, I'm finna Yeah, do because, you know, sometimes I, I don't get paid attention enough, so I was like, let me pick something so I can get, you know, noticed. And I like to, you know, put it down. And it worked? Oh, it does. I'm probably going to have to make up again right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That is hilarious. How many of you have ever won ooh, a huge sum of money? I don't know how common or rare that is. This is tough. Ten. I'm going to go with ten. Let's see what we got. The number of people. Thank you, Elizabeth, who have won a huge sum of money. I had a little help with this one, but 13. Yeah. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? Hi, I'm Felicia and I'm from Fontana, California. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, tell me all about it. Well, uh, last year I was on a game show, The Price is Right. Price is <laughs> Right. And I got on stage and I won a car. However, because of COVID, they couldn't find sensors for the Sentra that I won. And they held off for a long time and they just made an unprecedented decision to give me over $21,000 in a check. They did? <laughs> All right. True story, true story. And a couple years before that, I don't gamble, but I decided to gamble. My birthday's on Christmas. I went out, I turned 50, da da da. My sister likes to gamble, so she was playing the slots. And I'd always heard that if uh, somebody warms it up and they don't win, then you win. So she went, she, I said, Oh, you're done? She goes, Yeah. So I was like, Okay, I put $5 in and I won $10,000. <laughs> 
Ooh, wow! Can I get a donation? <laughs> you ain't got no change for me today? Oh, okay, I thought I'd try it. That's all, that's all. All right. Well, thank y'all for sharing that and allowing me to get in y'all business. You hear me? We'll be right back. I collect change. You know our next guest from the Emmy Award-winning show, Ugly Betty. His new show is called Shrinking. Take a look. Why are you here? Yeah, just dropping off the revisions I've done to your estate plan since in the last three years you haven't returned to call, email, or text. Ah. That's not something to be proud of. Should we go over this now? It's not really a good time. My daughter's coming by. Aw, girl dad. Love it. Nothing, nothing to add. Okay. <laughs> Please welcome Michael Yuri. Come on out. So you love Barry Manilow like I do. I don't love Barry Manilow. I love uh 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 of uh, <laughs> Barry Manilow. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Barry Manilow also, and that's how I first knew you because yeah. you sang um, Weekend, Weekend in, New in New England on Idol yes, I did. and crushed it. Thank you. You think so? Uh, oh my God. You know, that, you know that's the song I was eliminated off of. I know, and then you got kicked off. And I got kicked off. Which was, America really messed <laughs> up. It was a complete mistake. Even you were that, amazing. But he was so gracious, and he allowed mm. me to sing with him again. Has he been, like, I mean, he's just a gracious man, so I'd imagine he's been the same to you. Well, the first thing I did when I was on television, when I had any fame at all, was to use every ounce of it to meet Barry Manilow. Yes. I said, it's like I said, that, huh? I have a little bit of fame. I'm gonna use it all and find him and meet him. <laughs> and I did. I got to yes. meet him. What was that and, like when you oh, got to meet him? He was so cool. I've seen him in concert like 15 times. Oh, I mean, I'm wow. a real, I'm a fan of low. I'm a real a fan of low. Oh, y'all hear that? I, absolutely. And uh, I, 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 we've kind of gotten to know each other. And in fact, he's come to see me in yes. shows. I was in a play off Broadway uh -huh. in this little bitty theater. Uh, like, like you know, sort of dingy downtown New York theater, and I found out, that's it right there, and I found out uh, one day, one of the uh, people who worked at the theater, they were like, you'll never believe who bought tickets to the show today, Barry Manilow. And I was like, shut up, shut up, I don't wanna know. I don't <laughs> you, wanna... you don't wanna know that? I was like, I don't wanna know when he's coming. And, and, and so from that moment on, I just assumed he was there every night. Yes. I just pretended every night, like Barry Manilow that's was in the audience. That's a good motivation. And eventually he did come. One night, the stage I mean, it was a tiny little theater. And one night, the stage manager came behind my curtain, which was my dressing room, and was like, Barry Manilow's on the other side of this curtain. So they told you. And there he was. He was there. He walked backstage after the show, and he loved it, and he was so nice and gracious. And so now, anytime I'm in a show, I, <laughs> anytime I go on stage, I perform in front of an audience, I pretend like... Barry Manilow's Barry Man like, I'm him. He's here he's, right now. He's here. I'm pretending like he's Barry? here. Barry? Right oh, now. Barry. And it Where makes me better. It makes me better. <laughs> I love that. I we have to talk about your first role was Ugly Betty, and you used that to buy your first car. Uh, <laughs> yes, so Ugly Betty was my first big job. It was my first big you. break. Yes. And, um, and, I, and I moved to, you know, I was living in New York, so I moved to Los Angeles. I didn't have any money. Uh -huh. um, I didn't have a car. And so I went to get a car, to like buy a car. And uh, I went to Honda of Hollywood. And um, they were like, you don't have any money. <laughs> you, can't, you can't have this car. And I was like, yeah, but I'm on television. And they were like, yes. they're like, this is Honda of Hollywood. Everyone's on television. And I was like, no, but I'm really on television. And, and they wouldn't give me financing. I had no money. Uh -huh. And so I was like, well, if you go to www.abc.com slash Ugly Betty, and you look at the picture, I'm the gay guy next to Vanessa Williams, and that's how I got financed. And that's how you got it. It worked. They gave me a car. And that's that. <laughs> and you've been driving ever since, I'm sure. I, I have been cashing <laughs> in on being the gay guy next to Vanessa Williams ever since. I love that. Yeah. OK, what was your jobs before Ugly Betty? Before I had a big break, I was, you know, sometimes I was a temp. I had, I had some other acting jobs before that, theater jobs. I had one really cool job that I found in, like, the Village Voice. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, I was, I was a, uh, I was a medical research subject for the effects of marijuana. 
So I would, I would, I, yes, this is a real job. How does that work? <laughs> um, the only qualifications are lungs. And I, uh, I would go into this, it was, a ho it was in a hospital. I would go into a hospital and uh, I would smoke a joint. <laughs> and <laughs> sometimes I got real high. Sometimes I didn't get high at all. Um, and, and then I would like go on a computer and I would like do memory games and, and like match colors up and like simple mathematics. <laughs> And, um, this and, is amazing. <laughs> and, and, and then eventually they would let me go um, and pay me pretty well. And then like <laughs> years later, I was on Broadway and I left the theater one night and this woman stopped me and she was like, hi, do you remember me? I was your nurse. Stop <laughs> it! Did you remember her? I did, once, once she said she, I was the one who gave you the weed, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> you were my legal dealer. <laughs> legal dealer? <laughs> Does anybody else want that job now? <laughs> you advertise it. That's that, great. That, that's amazing. It was a great job. That is hilarious. Yeah. Okay, people love the new show, Shrinking. Tell oh. everyone about it. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm so happy about it. I'm so proud of it. It's, it's this incredible show for Apple TV Plus that's Stars Jason Siegel and Harrison Ford, who you saw, and it's about grief. Yes. Um, Jason and Harrison and Jessica Williams play therapists, and Jason is dealing with the death of his wife. And um, the show is about how grief is is funny and and sneaky and can can get you at any moment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 these are characters who deal with it through humor and love and connection, and uh, I'm so proud of it. It's, it's, uh, I, I think it's, it's a really important thing for us to be talking about, grief. Yes. We've all gone through something so horrible these last couple of years. We're all dealing with grief, and I think the, men, the, the stigma on mental health is, has lifted in a, in a lot of mm -hmm. ways, and um, I'm, just, I'm just so happy to be part of it and to be working with these heavies. I mean, these guys are yes. amazing, and, um, and I, I actually started therapy because of this show. <laughs> Not because it made me sad, but because I was like, I wanna, I wanna take encourage care of myself. You to do that. Yes. Yeah. I wanna take better care of myself. Wow, well thank you for coming to see us. Will you come back? I will come back You're anytime. You're amazing. And we'll sing some Barry Menelow, okay? I love I that. promise. All right? When I'm you a... our eyes <laughs> you. Yeah. You can get Shrinking on Apple TV Plus. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.